there are so many words I want to say, but sometimes I start saying them and I'm like, wait, I don't think this is the right one. So like, what? Hi, welcome back. And if you are new here, Hi, my name is Daniela, and welcome to my little corner where I talk just about everything about books. So, hi. This video, I'm going to talk about all the books that I read in January. There are quite a bit. I did so good in January, I didn't expect to read this much, but somehow it just happened, and I'm so happy about this. I read, whoa. Okay, I read one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I read seven books. In January out of which two are a bit shorter but we're still counting them so I'll start just chronologically I guess the first book that I read in January was before we say goodbye by Toshikazu Kawaguchi translated by Geoffrey Tusevat and um, overall it was a really nice book this was the fourth from the before the coffee gets cold series and I really enjoyed the first three uh, but I must say, I didn't enjoy this one as much. Um, I gave it a 3.75 stars. It was nice, but I felt like it kind of, it was kind of dragging, if that makes sense. I feel like um, there's just becoming repetitive. This book uh, is um, set between the third and the fourth book. So it's not like after the fourth book, it's somewhere in between. And I feel like the action is very repetitive, even though there are um, four different stories with four different people. I just, I didn't feel as connected to them as in the first three books, though I did really like one of the stories. Um, it was The Farewell, I think, the second story um, about a woman who wants to go back in time to say goodbye to her dog that passed away that story really resonated with me but otherwise um it was nice the writing was lovely as always but it just felt like i've read this before you know like the the first three said everything there was to say and this one's kind of it was nice but it wasn't necessary that's the way i felt about it so i gave it a 3.75 still a great book i do recommend and it's just lovely. I don't know if you can see, but it also like shines. It's just so nice. So this was before we say goodbye. After that, I felt like reading something easier. Um, not necessarily. Well, yeah, easier. So I went for a graphic novel. I read Username Evie by Joe Sugg. Um, there was a point in time when I followed all the British YouTubers, so I, I was kind of excited when I found this as the second hand in the bookstore, but I was so disappointed. I gave this a 175, yeah, a 175. It was just bad is the word I want to use. The only reason I didn't give it like a one, because I don't really go under one, one is like the minimum for me, the only reason I didn't give it less than that is because there are some points in the book where the art is actually nice. Let me just find something. Okay, so like, the art is quite good, but the story was terrible. First of all, I don't know how much work Joe Sugg actually did for this book, because you can clearly see that the illustration, the coloring, everything was done by other people, which is fantastic, especially since he does mention them in the book. Like, this is the team. But again, I don't know how much work he actually did. Uh, but other than that, the story is just stupid. So this book is about Evie, who doesn't really fit in, and her sick father. Her mother died a long time ago, and in the beginning of this book, her father passes away. And before doing that, he creates like a virtual world for Evie, which she can access by entering a laptop. Um, but just the whole thing was so, so badly written. It was just, the plot is terrible. It's like an elementary school student wrote it. It was just so bad. Also, in the beginning, 
uh, when she comes from school because she can't integrate herself and all that. In order to just feel comfort, she goes home and let me find this part. Oh my God. She goes home and just goes in the fridge. In the fridge. That's her escape. Like every time she doesn't feel good about the world, she dumps all the food on the floor and goes in the fridge. Like who does that? What kind of plot is that? It's just stupid. And this book, I I hate it. Honestly, it's a good thing it was a graphic novel because otherwise I would have just abandoned it immediately. But this was the second book of January, I guess. After that book, I felt like reading something short because I was still frustrated of how awful that book was. So I went for Little Women by Louisa May Alcott. Um, as you can see, this is a, the very short version. It's the Longman Classics version. Uh, because when I ordered it online, I didn't realize this was the short version. I thought it was just a regular one. But it was a really nice introduction to Little Women. It basically condenses the story. I gave it a 2.75. And overall, it was nice. I did not like two parts of the plot like the way they went but again I don't know how much I can judge this book because I didn't really read the entirety of it I just read the very condensed version and I didn't really have time to just care about the characters as much they were very I don't know one-dimensional I want to say some of them did evolve but just there's very little space to develop characters in this book but this was Little Women, I guess. After that, I finally decided to pick the January book. If you don't know, uh, each month I have a book that I unwrap. You can see here. And for January, it was One Day by David Nichols. This was the January book, quite a thick one. Uh, fun fact, this is also the book from my banner that I'm reading there. Yeah, it took me a bit to read this. And it, it is quite a long book. It's like 437 pages but I genuinely loved it this was the first five stars of the year I did not expect to enjoy it as much as I did but I genuinely loved it so this book is about Emma and Dexter and they meet when they graduate university and then the way this book is narrated is um, by telling their story for the next 20 years but it only concentrates on one day, that's 15 July. So each year you'd have like 15 July, 1988, I think it's the first year, and then 1989 and so on. And you get both, both of their perspectives, like both Emma and Dexter, and it's really nice to see how they develop and how they grow as individuals. And I did feel like the end was a bit unnecessary um, it reminded me a lot of um, Lessons in Chemistry by Bonnie Garmus. Um, I don't know. It was nice. Obviously, I gave it a five star. But I do feel like the end could have been slightly better. Um, but I do think the author wrapped it really well. And I don't want to spoil anything. But I genuinely recommend this book. It is on the thicker side. But it was so nicely written that it just doesn't feel like you're reading that much you know also I'm pretty sure this has both a movie and a TV show I am not sure about the TV show but I'm pretty sure there is something like that so um, obviously fantastic book definitely recommend this was one day the next book is Light Years by Tamar Stain. I gave this a 3.75 and this book is about the story of Maya um, a girl that was born in Israel and one day there's an explosion like a bomb attack uh, that kills her boyfriend this is not a spoiler it happens like in the first chapters so I wouldn't consider that a spoiler and afterwards the novel is told um, back and forth it's like the past and the present her past in Israel and then her present in uh, Virginia uh, United States where she goes for university and um, I don't know it took me a bit to get into it because it starts right as um, 
the bomb happened and there are parts where I just didn't care about but there are some parts that are beautifully written I thought that the part when the actual bomb happens and her confusion and everything that goes around that was really well explained and I did love how that was written um, but I just feel like some of the romance just wasn't necessary uh, maybe for some people it is but for me I didn't think it was necessary so I gave it a 3.75 but overall it is a nice book it's quite short um, so yeah this was Light Years by Tamara Spain. After that I wanted to read James Harriet All Creatures Great and Small but I didn't manage to finish it. It's just such a dense book that I'm still, I have, as you can see, I have a really long way to go. Um, but I did read a bit of this and then I felt like I needed to read something else at the same time as well. So I started reading The Life-Changing Magic of Not Giving an F uh, by Sarah Knight. This was really, really quick read. It's kind of a self-help book I'd say even though the title is quite crude it's about just not caring as much about the world it tells you to divide everything that you care about into four categories so you have things work friends strangers and acquaintances and then the fourth is family and decide what you care about and what you don't particularly care about and the things that you don't care about just to say whatever and just ignore them say don't care or say i can't talk about this because this doesn't interest me um but i found this book to be quite witty it had some nice references the writing is really easy and accessible the book is as well it's very short it's like 200 something pages and it has an appendix as well it's really easy to read. The language is very accessible. It's not pretentious in any way. And I got this over in like two or three days. It's just, I don't know. I feel like sometimes I care too much. And this was a nice reminder that people generally only care about themselves for the majority of the time. So just don't give as much thought into everything you do. Sometimes you just have to take things easily and as long as you talk to people honestly and you're not an asshole then everything will be okay you know you just don't have to stress as much so um this was a nice read and i'm glad i read it because now i have another book read from my bookshelf so that's great i gave this book a 4.5 so clearly i enjoyed it and yeah this was the life-changing magic of not giving an f and the last book of January is But Kids Don't Die by Fran Forstel, illustrated by Sally Dennis. As you can see, I read this fully not knowing what this is about. It's the story of um, Tom and Chris, uh, who are best friends, and Chris dies. Also, they're like high schooler or elementary school. I don't, I don't remember. I think they're high schoolers and um chris dies and it's about tom's journey on how to overcome this and the idea that kids die as well because most of the time you expect adults to die or the elderly but kids don't really do that well it's quite rare for children to die so it's the way that everyone copes with the feelings and um overall is a nice book um, I try to find more about this, like more about the author or um, just anything in general about the book, but I genuinely couldn't. It's like this book doesn't exist. It It is out there, like you can find it on Google Books as well, but it just, it tells you nothing about it. Also, the pictures, I want to say, in the book are uh, like um, lino print. So I thought that was cool. Again, not the most successful line of print. I say like a little snob. But yeah, like sometimes the line of prints are quite difficult to understand what what they are because they're quite crude and there's not much detail into them. Um, but I mean, this is a very, very quick and short story. I don't think I'm the target audience. 
but overall it was a nice read i gave this a four stars because the ideas that they bring forward are important and they did explain it in an easy and just very succinct manner that is available for everyone really so yeah those were my reads for january i'm so excited about how much i read also i have all these um all these little oh, have all these little notes that i can finally just um pack and put them in my red jar i'm so excited to get this filled so um yeah that was january thank you for watching and i hope to see you again bye i just give the earth my soul hear my thoughts bounce off the walls